severe case of pyogenic granuloma or lobular capillary hemangioma of the skin. This was curetted from the right middle finger of a middle-aged adult and the clinical suspicion was for a pyogenic granuloma. So you can see here on the low power we've got these multiple curetted fragments of skin and as we go a bit closer we can see that it looks like the lesion has ulcerated on the surface, we've lost the epidermis and it's been replaced by this fibrinous exudate. And then in the dermis we've got this rather cellular looking proliferation here and it looks vascular and vasoformative forming lots of little vascular spaces and as we go closer all of the cells here making up this proliferation are in fact endothelial cells small rather uniform looking bland endothelial cells forming these small capillary sized vascular spaces so we do have a benign looking vascular proliferation here and these appearances are very typical of pyogenic granuloma with one of the defining features being this lobular configuration of the proliferation forming these little rounded bundles of capillaries in the dermis. So the name lobular capillary hemangioma is really much more accurate than the term pyogenic granuloma, although pyogenic granuloma is still very much used within clinical terminology, so you will certainly come across it almost certainly more often than lobular capillary hemangioma amongst clinicians. But this is really nice typical histology for pyogenic granuloma. In terms of differential diagnoses, well, probably the main reason why the clinician removes it and the main thing often they want to exclude with this rather red vascular looking polypoid lesion is to make sure they're not dealing with NA melanotic melanoma. Histologically, obviously, the two will be very different. With a melanoma, a nodular melanoma, you would expect sheets of malignant atypical looking melanocytes filling the dermis rather than a vascular proliferation. So histologically, usually those two lesions are quite distinct. Histologically, the main differential diagnoses, things that can look very similar to a pyogenic granuloma, certainly one of them would be a nodular type of Kaposi sarcoma, uh, which is also a vascular proliferation, so will also give you vascular space formation. Generally with those, you tend to get a slightly more solid arrangement of cells and less lobulated. And the endothelial cells themselves making up the Kaposi sarcoma tend to be rather more spindled and slightly larger, atypical looking cells. And if you're in any doubt or suspicion about the possibility for Kaposi sarcoma, then obviously an immunostain for HHB8 is the test to do, which will either confirm the diagnosis if it's positive or refute it if it's negative. The other main differential diagnosis to consider is bacillary angiomatosis. This is actually uh, an infective pathology uh, and it's caused by infection with Bartonella species, particularly in immunosuppressed individuals. And the infection results in this um, very florid vascular proliferation which also has this very lobulated appearance to it, very closely simulating a pyogenic granuloma. As well as the vascular proliferation in bacillary angiomatosis, you also tend to get um, a lot of inflammatory cell infiltrate, often with neutrophils and neutrophil debris. And mixed in with all of that, you see these clumps of rather granular, slightly purplish looking material which actually represents the bacteria in bacillary angiomatosis and that can usually be highlighted with warthin starry stains. So that's what to look out for in bacillary angiomatosis but this was a fairly nice typical example of a pyogenic granuloma of the skin.